Okay. So we have already finished the um, units that will be on the final exam, and we have covered the writing portion. So today, for fun, let's go back and do a unit that will not be on the exam, but of course, in terms of learning English, the more you read, the more uh, the, the better your English will be. So it never hurts to learn more. This unit is on money. Finance and investing. So let's go through first to see what the um, essay is about, and then we can look at it in more detail. Finance and investing. Let's say $1 million suddenly came into your life. What would you do with it? Travel? Buy a house? Just go shopping every day? Give it away to other people? Or invest it? Like many people, you might want to spend part of the money right away and invest the remainder. What are some of the things you should know about investing? Well, first, there are a number of options available for investing money and building a portfolio of investments. Some of the most common ways are stocks, bonds, and bank accounts. If you prefer physical assets rather than financial assets, you might want to buy a house or paintings or collect valuable items such as coins or old automobiles. The choice is yours. And a lot of this decision is based on your financial goals and your tolerance for risk. What is the role of risk in investing? Whenever you place your money in someone else's hands, you have to assume some risk. One of the safest low risk methods of investing is to open a bank account. In the US, the government guarantees all bank accounts up to US $100,000. So there's really little or no risk. But your reward for investing in a bank account will be low as well. So there is a relationship between risk and reward. Usually, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. But sometimes risk will involve great loss. The only question is, how much risk can you tolerate? If bank accounts are the safest means of investing, owning physical assets are probably the next safest. If you buy a house, the value of the house will probably increase, though sometimes it will decrease. In any case, you still have the house to live in. The riskiest of the most common forms of investment is the stock market, but the potential for significant reward is also the highest. Throughout the last 70 years in the US, the stock market has produced the best average return on investment. How well has the Taiwan stock market done compared to other forms of investment over the last 20 years? Two good ways to reduce risk in your investment portfolio are to buy mutual funds, which invest or buy stocks in many companies in a targeted sector or across a broad area, and to diversify or invest in a number of different types of assets, both physical and financial. High risk with high return on investment or great loss, or low risk with low return on investment and little chance of loss. Which would you choose? OK, so we once again have a very well structured essay. The first paragraph gives you a scenario, a situation, and asks you to think about what you would do. And in thinking about what you would do if you suddenly got a million dollars, the essay wants you to start thinking about what it means to invest. So the second paragraph is where the main points of the essay appear. Um, 
how to invest, like the things you can buy. It mentions uh, investing money in these ways. It mentions physical assets, which means investing using uh, things that are not money. Uh, and then it mentions the third main idea of risk, function. The next paragraph is about risk and what that means. Uh, and it also starts talking about uh, these ways of investing. It, this one talks about uh, opening a bank account, kai in hang huto. The next paragraph talks about physical assets. Uh, in this case, buying a house. Physical assets, I think in Chinese is yu xing zi chan. It also talks about the stock market, gu piao shi chang. And then the last paragraph is about reducing risk. How to decrease the risk of your investments. So yes, a uh, very clear structure and, and a clear structure helps us to understand what the essay is talking about at uh, every point. So uh, let's look more closely at the language. Let's say this tells you that this will be an imagined scenario. In Chinese, we say jaru shuo. Um, and notice this structure. The or before the last item tells you that these questions are actually a list. Right? This is A, this is B, C, D, A, E, or, and then the last one, F. And once you realize that this is a list, you will understand that the emphasis is on the last item. This one. Uh, this is the one that the author wants you to remember because this will be what the author will talk about. The. Well, let's see, did we miss anything? Just go shopping every day. This just means like forget about uh, the details, forget about long term planning. Just do whatever you want. In this case, go shopping. And then here, the remainder. As you see, the word remainder comes from the root remain. So the remainder is what you have left. In this case, uh, after spending part of the money right away, you take what you have left and you invest it. Not uh, you So remainder in this case uh, in Chinese would be rue. Um, next one, to build a portfolio of investments. The word portfolio comes from, uh, I'm sure you guys know, comes from artists in the old days when they had to like bring a collection of their work to show to people, they would put it in a folder and that folder is called a portfolio. Uh, so it became the word for an artist's collection of work. But that kind of folder was also used by bankers to uh, put together important documents relating to their investments. So a portfolio of investments just means everything that you are investing in. Uh, like a, a list of investments or a collection of investments. Uh, and then it mentions three common types. Stocks, we mentioned this later, uh, 股票. Bonds, bonds are um, government debt, 国债. 
Uh, now in Taiwan, you can buy government debt, but you cannot buy it online. You have to go to a post office and physically buy a piece of paper. But in most countries, um, government debt or sovereign bonds are sold uh, in a similar way to stocks. Taiwan is an exception. Uh, let's see. So these are the financial assets. Uh, assets that you count that are that are closely related to money. But maybe you want to put your money in something physical like a house. Or paintings. Uh, rich people like to invest in paintings. Um, or maybe coins. In B, some people like to collect old coins. Or old automobiles. An automobile is just a car. So old automobiles means old cars. Uh, and it says what you invest in depends on your financial goals. And your tolerance for risk, which means how much risk can you take? Tolerance comes from the verb to tolerate. Rongren, right? To how much can you take? Uh, and so the, this paragraph ends by talking about risk. The next paragraph will be about risk. When you place money in someone else's hands, which means when you give it to somebody, you have to assume some risk. The word assume here does not mean suppose, jiasu. The word assume here means to take on. You have to take on some risk. You have to bear some risk. Uh, this comes from the older use of the word assume. In fact, the two uh, ideas are connected. If you assume an idea like that means that you take on this idea and you pretend that this idea is real. So the two meanings are related. Uh, so by thinking about risk, we can uh, divide investment methods into low risk, middle risk and high risk. Um, now, as this essay says, if you open a bank account, the government will guarantee uh, all bank accounts up to a minimum level. I'm sure you learned about this in high school. The idea is that um, a bank does not keep all of its money all of the time. So there's always a small risk that everybody will want their money back at the same time and the bank will not have enough cash. Uh, in this case, uh, for every bank account below a certain number, the government will provide the cash. And according to this essay, in the US, that number is 100,000 US dollars. So if in the US you open a bank account, and there is less than a hundred thousand in your account, and there is a run on the bank, which means everybody wants their money at the same time. There is a run on the bank. Uh, then, as long as uh, your account is under a hundred thousand, the government will give you the cash, or the government will give the cash to the bank, and the bank will give the cash to you. Um, so there's little risk, but there's also little reward. Usually we use the word reward as a kind of uh, compensation for doing something good. Jiang Li Jing, right? Bao, uh, yeah, or some Chang Huan Jing, right? Some money for doing something good. But here the word reward simply means uh, money you earn from investment. 
So in uh, financial English, you will often hear risk and reward put together, talked about together. Here, right? There's a relationship between risk and reward. Um, notice this sentence structure. There is a relationship. In Chinese, we would translate this as yo guanxi. There is, there are, in Chinese is yo. So please do not start your sentences with have. Notice also this sentence structure. The greater the risk, the greater the reward. Here, right? The greater, the greater. In Chinese, this would be rie zemeyang, rie zemeyang, right? The jia bi jiao ji, dou dian, the jia bi jiao ji. So the greater the risk, the greater the reward in Chinese is feng xian rie gao, bao cou rie gao. But sometimes the risk will involve great loss. Involve, usually we understand this as uh, to be related to. Uh, so in fact, this is a euphemism, wei wan ci. It simply means that sometimes um, you will not make back your money when there is high risk. But instead of saying it very straightforward, it says it will involve loss. Gen, uh, so it's even way once. So it's a euphemism. Uh, the only question is, comma, how much risk can you tolerate? We talked about the word tolerate earlier. I wanted you to notice this sentence structure. Comma. This sentence structure is actually indirect speech. The sentence is introducing uh, this sentence inside, and it's treating it like a quotation. So, like you can add quotation marks after the comma and after the question mark, but it's not a quotation. Nobody actually says this. It's more like something you might ask yourself something you might think about to yourself. In that case, I think a better way to present this would be a capital H, and then this part that you think to yourself should be italicized. Uh, that way we know that this is not part of the bigger sentence. Of course, you don't have to use reported speech. You can use indirect speech, in which case the sentence would look like the only question is how much risk you can tolerate. No comma. So you can either use reported speech like this, but mark the, the reported quote uh, more clearly. Or you can use indirect speech and uh, eliminate the comma and put together these two parts by turning the question into a statement by, re by reversing these two words. This uh, next sentence structure is also quite interesting. If bank accounts are the safest means of investing, owning physical assets are probably the next safest. Even though it begins with the word if, we know that this first half is true. We just read about this in the last paragraph. So in fact, even though it looks like an if sentence, what it really is saying is A, and B. It's actually an and sentence. 
because we we know that the if part is true. Therefore, the second half must also be true. It's simply a way of transitioning from one sentence to the next sentence. Uh, this next sentence is an actual if sentence. If you buy a house, do you buy a house? We don't know, but if you buy a house, uh, the value of the house will probably increase, though sometimes it will decrease. Now, at first glance, this might look like a redundant sentence, fei hua, right? Of course, either it will increase or it will decrease. Um, but really what's going on is, it is the sentence is reminding you that an increase in value is not guaranteed. Uh, because the entire essay is about investment and investment is about making money. So when it talks about buying a house as investing in a physical asset, the default thinking is that it will make money. 就是通篇的背景假设都是赚钱方式. So that's the default mindset when the essay mentions buying a house. So in order to remind you that it may not always make money, the sentence adds this second part. Sometimes it will decrease. So it may look like it is redundant, but really it is reacting to the reader psychology. How is the reader thinking about this essay as they read? And the author is responding to that thinking. In any case, in which means whatever happens, in Chinese we call this Ru uh, Case means situation. So in any situation, so no matter what situation, you still have the house to live in. So if the value goes up, that's great. If the value goes down, you still have a place to live. By the way, this may not be a good idea, especially if you live somewhere where houses are very expensive. Um, because if you end up being unable to keep paying for the house, you may lose the house back to the bank. So it, it still depends on how much money you have and how much risk you are willing to assume. As this essay keeps reminding us, there is always some risk whenever you invest in anything. Um, so after physical assets, then it talks about the stock market. Uh, and it mentions that the stock market has produced the best average return on investment. A return on investment simply means a reward on investment. So how much money you make. Uh, this is one of the key concepts that bankers and investors look at and talk about. So it will often be abbreviated to ROI. So a return on investment is the, the number of how much money you put in and how much money you make back. That percentage is the return on investment. But notice how this sentence is written. Throughout the last 70 years, the stock market has produced the best average return on investment. So it sounds good, right? It gave us the, it gave people the most amount of money. But the way that this sentence is written is very, very careful. If you turn this sentence into math, 
basically what it says is from I guess this was in what 2003. And if you go start from 2003 and you go back 70 years. And you look at the stock market value now and the stock market value on that day 70 years ago. The return on investment for the average of this period of the stock market is greater than uh, the return on investment for like other means of investment like houses, paintings, uh, bonds. So it's not saying that if you invest in the stock market, you are more likely to make money. It is simply stating a historical fact. If you start at that point and you end at this point, in between, the value increased the most out of all of the different investment options. This is very important to notice. If in the future you do decide to invest, you will be faced with many different commercials, advertisements, promotions. Everybody wants your money. So when people say something like this sentence, you have to understand what it is saying. It is not saying that the stock market will make you the most money. It is simply saying from that point to this point, the increase was greatest. That does not mean it will continue to increase. That does not mean that it was a steady increase. It might have gone up and down and up and down, but it ended uh, slightly better. So the the choice of 70 years is a careful choice. The use of the word average is also a careful choice. You have to pay attention to what you're reading. Also notice that it's talking about the US, but we live in Taiwan. And yet the author does not talk about the Taiwanese stock market. The author asks us how well did the Taiwan stock market do? I don't know. So if this were a commercial for buying stocks, these are some of the tricks that you have to notice um, to really know what you're doing. In Taiwan, it, you're in Taiwan, so the commercial probably is selling Taiwanese stocks. Um, if this were the commercial, you have to notice, first of all, it's not talking about Taiwanese stocks. Second of all, it chose a very specific time period. And third of all, it, it talks about the average. Uh, so in the middle, there may have been great changes.因为他讲的是从今天往回推七十年的平均报酬率股票最高，但是他没有跟你讲中间的起伏，他没有跟你讲为什么他要挑七十年，他可能用这样的方式写让那个数字最好看，然后最后呢，他讲的是美国股票，
the doing of the action. But if you use an infinitive, 不定词, like here, you are emphasizing the option of doing this, the choice, if you do this. Um, it, it has a sense of being in the future. It has not yet happened. Or maybe it is abstract, 抽象的. So here it says there are two good ways to reduce risk. Therefore, uh, this assumes that you have not done these two things. So when it needs to use a noun verb, a, a noun, a verbal as a noun, it uses the infinitive instead of a gerund. So the first one is to buy mutual funds, 共同基金. Mutual just means 共同. It means like both of us. Usually it's two people. Uh, and it tells you that a mutual fund will buy stocks in many companies in a targeted sector. A sector is like a, a category of, in this case, companies. So maybe like technology companies, energy companies, retail companies. Each one is a different sector. And each sector is targeted. Uh, treated as a target. We're focusing on that sector only. Uh, but some mutual funds are also investing across a broad area. So maybe it's not that focused. It depends on which mutual fund. So this is the first way to reduce risk, to buy mutual funds. The second way is to diversify. And it explains this means to invest in a number of different types of assets, both physical and financial. So it says different types of assets. So if you buy the stocks of many different companies, that's not really diversification because they are all stocks. Those are 股票. You should consider buying different types of investments. And the idea is that if you only buy stocks, even if they're from very different companies, usually the stock market um, will react to big news together. Uh, the whole stock market might shift in the same direction. And so in that case, your so-called diversification does not actually protect you from risk. But if you buy different types of assets, for example, government bonds, usually government bonds will move in the opposite direction to the stock market. So if you buy both stocks and bonds, uh, no matter which direction the market moves, you should be protected. And then the last sentence of the essay throws the idea back to the reader. High risk, high return, low risk, low return. Which would you choose? So the idea is after giving you these basic ideas, um, you are now prepared to make some basic investments. OK. Do you have questions about this essay or about investing? If you ever do invest, like it says here, right? You can buy mutual funds to reduce risk. What it does not say is that buying mutual funds, uh, you also have to pay a fee. So even if the mutual fund makes a little bit of money, you may still lose money because you have to pay the fee uh, to the manager of the fund. Um, so yeah, the, the point here is if you do invest, you must be very careful and pay attention to details. OK. Um, let's see, are there any words we didn't talk about here? Institution. Usually it means a kind of organization. 
but sometimes it can mean um, a way that a society does something. Like, um, so in Chinese, the first idea would be jigo, right? Organization. The second idea is translated as jian zhi, so hui jian zhi. Uh, so for example, voting in a democratic country, the way that we vote is an institution in the second sense. And yeah, I think we've talked about the rest of these words. Okay, so let's do some vocabulary practice. Um, this is on page three. Match the words with the correct meaning. There are ten. I will give you five minutes. And then we will compare answers.
OK, do you need more time? If you need more time, please raise your hand. OK, let's quickly go through these. First, uh, let's go by definition Look on the right hand side. First one, a certificate issued by a government or a company. It says government, so this is a bond. Um, the same thing for a company is actually called a security. In Chinese, we call this zhenqin, a security. Number two, a list of investments. This one is portfolio. C, a part of a company's capital or worth. Uh, this one is actually stock. It's a different way of thinking about stocks. If you buy a stock, basically you own part of a company, uh, and so you have the power to join votes whenever the company is making a decision. So a stock is a part of a company's worth. Fourth one, a real thing one owns. Real thing, so this is physical asset. Fifth one, to direct or use toward to set as a goal. This one is target. F, relating to or involving money. This one is financial. G, to accept, to bear or put up with. This one is tolerate. H, the money earned on an investment. This one is return on investment. I, an area or portion. This one is sector. And J, open-ended investment in a group of assets by a company with investors' money. This one is mutual funds. Questions? Okay, one last thing before the break. We say invest in stocks, invest in house, but you can also use the word invest as a metaphor, bi yu, to improve something. So you can invest in yourself. Improve yourself so that you can do better things in the future. That's also uh, one way to use the word invest. Okay, let's take a short break.
OK. Let's look at the other unit of the textbook that will not be on the final exam. Unit seven. Entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, it's a word from French. This is page 90. Starting your own business. All of us have a secret dream of being our own boss, right? Although many of us eagerly look forward to the day when financial success in our own enterprise could give us the purchasing power to buy the luxuries we dream of, the chance for complete independence serves as an even more powerful attraction to have a successful business of our own. But instead of idling away our time with empty dreams, why not organize a plan to reach these objectives? As a first step, we could look at the lives of some modern entrepreneurs, examine their strategies, and identify their keys to success. Some outstanding examples are automobile ma uh, maker Henry Ford, Sony founder Akio Morita, entertainment leaders Lou Chud and Barry Gordy, and computer entrepreneur Bill Gates. Let's consider the examples and experiences of these famous independent businessmen check out their steps to success and see if they offer any suggestions for inclusion in our own strategy. As we look at all of these examples, we will see that available capital, interest and ability, and most importantly, elbow grease or hard work played critically important roles. How important is available capital for achieving our plans? Many would say it is not necessarily all that important. For example, Akio Morita started Sony Corporation with only 500 US dollars and Bill Gates organized the effort that eventually became Microsoft with virtually no capital at all. Barry Gordy founded Motown Records with only 800 US dollars of borrowed money. The crucial factors of interest, ability, and practical experience play a far more important role. If we look at our above list of examples, we will really see that all of them were well seasoned veterans of their chosen fields of business. Before they actually started their own companies, they had already learned many valuable lessons from the school of hard knocks or a long, difficult period of experience, trial and error, and practical application. For example, Bill Gates turned himself to full-time tinkering with computers while he was still only 12 years old. Lou Chud had many years of practical experience working for other record companies before he founded Imperial Records in 1945. Barry Gordy had gone through bankruptcy as a record shop owner before he started his own record company in 1958. Moreover, if we go beyond our list and look at other examples, we can see all around us in everyday life, it is clear that interest, aptitude, and experience are almost always the deciding factors. If one factor is even more important than those mentioned above, 
we would have to say it is elbow grease. Thomas Edison said, genius is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. By saying this, of course, he meant hard work is more important than brilliant ideas. And if we check our list of successful examples, all of them were hard workers. Bill Gates and his assistants normally work 75 hours each week. One final note in our planning for life as an entrepreneur. It is important for us to take a serious inventory of our overall motives for starting our own business. If our principal reason is a desire for wealth and prestige, our efforts will be doomed to failure. However, an interest in the work we are going into and a desire to learn and see improvement will carry us through the long hours of hard work and sacrifice necessary to build a successful business. So first, let's take a look at the, the broader structure. The essay is about starting your own business, as it says in the first sentence, which is probably the easiest sentence in the essay. We all want to be our own boss. Um, if that's true, then you should, in the second paragraph, organize a plan. And this essay says that one part is by looking at the lives of some successful businessmen to see how they did it. And it mentions the people that the essay will talk about. Henry Ford, Akio Morita, Lou Chud, and Barry Gordy, and Bill Gates. These five people will all appear in the essay. This paragraph gives us the key points that the essay will talk about. Uh, so it looks like uh, in the next few paragraphs uh, will be uh, devoted to each paragraph will be devoted to one point. One paragraph on capital, which means how much money you have. Uh, in Chinese, we call this zibun one paragraph on interest and ability, and one paragraph on elbow grease, which means hard work. I'll talk about this later. So the first paragraph, capital. And the idea is, it is not necessarily all that important. The next one, interest, ability, and practical experience. Uh, are far more important than capital. And then this paragraph is elbow grease or hard work. And then in the concluding paragraph, it gives us one more idea. We have to look at our motives. Why do we want to start a business? So yeah, another very clearly structured essay. Uh, good structure helps us to understand what is going on. OK, let's look at this in more detail. As we talked about in the second unit on grammar, the um, dash can be used anywhere to break a sentence. Here it is being used to turn a statement into a question. Eagerly, which means like with energy, we really want to. Uh, in Chinese, we would call this ji ji de. Look forward to the day when just means look forward to when. Financial success in our own enterprise. Enterprise here means the thing that we do. So we look forward to when we can make money by doing what we want to do. And this could give us the purchasing power, which means we have enough money to buy certain things, 
to purchase certain things. To buy the luxuries we dream of. Luxury, of course, here means expensive things. So the first half of this sentence from here to here simply means we all want to make enough money to buy ex expensive stuff by doing what we want. Sorry, we all want to make enough money doing what we want to do in order to buy expensive stuff. Well, maybe not all of us, right? It says many of us. The second half of the sentence, the chance for complete independence serves as means can be an even more powerful attraction to have a successful business of our own. So how do you put these two halves together? Although, notice that in English, if your sentence begins with although, you do not add but or however to the second half of this sentence. This is something that many people do. You either use but or however here, or you use although here. Choose one only. So this is saying that uh, wanting to be independent because you own your own business could be an even more powerful reason to start your own business than simply wanting to be able to buy expensive stuff. Uh, independence here means financial independence. You don't depend on other people for money. You don't wait for your boss to pay you. You don't wait for uh, like other people to give you money. You make your own money. Next paragraph. To idle away our time means to waste our time. Idle, I-D-L-E, means not doing anything. Xianzi. As a verb, dongzi. If we say that a car is idling, that means that the car is turned on, but it's not moving. As a daicu. So instead of wasting our time with empty dreams, why not organize a plan, put together a plan to reach these objectives, to reach these goals, the goal of building your own company? As a first step, we could. So the idea is maybe you don't want to organize a plan, but if you do want to organize a plan, the first thing to do could be this. This is why it says could instead of can. It does not assume that you really do want to make a plan like this. Uh, so we could, and then it gives us a list, three things. Look at the lives, examine their strategies, and identify their keys to success. So it's a list of three things. Uh, look at the lives of some modern entrepreneurs. An entrepreneur is simply someone who starts their own business. So from this word entrepreneur, you have the adjective entrepreneurial. Uh, you have the idea noun entrepreneurship. Um, so let's look at the lives of these people examine their strategies and identify, which means to pick out uh, their keys to success. Some outstanding examples are, um, so it gives us five people, right? Henry Ford, car maker, the, the guy who invented the modern car. Uh, the next guy is the founder of Sony. 
Um, today, Japanese names in English often put the family name first and the personal name second. This became an official change a few years ago in Japan, but many famous people still uh, put their personal name first. Uh, and this can be a little confusing because some newspapers put the personal name first, some newspapers put the family name first. Um, so this is also something to be careful about. Uh, and then these two people are considered together. These two people each founded a very successful and important record label, Sampian Gongsi. We'll see that below. And then, of course, you have Bill Gates, who started Microsoft. Let's. And then it gives us another list. A, consider these people. B, check out what they did. And C, see if we can learn from them. Basically, this list is the same as this list, right? These three things are the same as these three things. I have to say the writing in this essay is not very concise, which kind of makes sense because a lot of business writing is not very good. So since this is an essay on business, it is not surprising that the writing is not of the highest quality. Uh, a lot of um, filler words. Uh, OK, so consider the examples. To consider here just means to look at and think about. The examples and experiences of these famous independent businessmen, yes, they are all men. Don't have any women here. Um, but also, like, logically speaking, shouldn't their experiences be the examples? Examples and experiences sounds like two things, but really the experiences are the examples. So it's actually one thing, right? Bad writing. Um, check out their steps to success, like what they did to succeed. And see if they. Not sure what this refers to. Maybe the they is these steps, right? If these steps offer any suggestions. For us, but instead of saying us, it says inclusion in our own strategy, whether we can take these ideas and put them into our own plan. Inclusion is the noun of include. Bauhan was Naru. As we look at all of these examples, we will see that these three things played critically important roles. OK, so first one, available capital. How much money could they use? Interest and ability. How, how much do they want to do it? And how much were they able to do? And most importantly, elbow grease, which means hard work. Elbow, Sozo. Grease. Grease is useless oil. In Chinese, we simply say yo, but in English, there are two different words. If you can use it to do something, it is called oil. If it is useless, it is called grease. So if like we eat fried chicken, it's not an oily food. It's a greasy food. You can't use that part of the food to do something. But if you go to make fried chicken, what you add to the chicken is oil because you're using that to make the fried chicken. Does that make sense? So oil is the thing you can use. Grease is the thing you cannot use. Here, 
the the grease in elbow grease is talking about fixing cars. When something goes wrong in a car and the mechanic has to put their hand deep into the car to fix something, um, the inside of the car is uh, very well greased. There's a lot of grease in a car because a car is a machine. It has many moving parts and we don't want these moving parts to rub against each other and create fi uh, friction. That's why there's a lot of grease in the car. So when a, a mechanic sticks his or her hand deep into a car to fix something, often the whole hand and arm will be covered with grease. So elbow grease just means that you have to go deep and work hard to do something. So elbow grease is hard work. These three things played critically important roles. Uh, again, not very good writing because critical just means important. So critically important means importantly important. Yeah. OK, so the first one, capital. It is not necessarily all that important. So this is. This does not mean that capital is unimportant. It means that capital is not always important. That's what the necessarily means. It is not always necessary. But usually it helps if you have money. Not just for starting a business. It helps a lot of things if you have money. Um, so here this paragraph is giving us examples of people who succeeded in starting a business even when they did not have a lot of money. Um, let's look at this one. Bill Gates organized the effort. So here the word effort does not mean hard work. Here the word effort means something that a group of people try together. Uh, at this point, when Bill Gates started, it was not yet a company. So this sentence says that this effort eventually became Microsoft. So the, the reason why this sentence uses the word effort is because at the time it is not really a thing. It's not a company. It's not like a, a a club, right? It's just a group of people working together. Uh, so they call it an effort. Virtually means uh, basically, essentially. Uh, it could also mean something like almost. So virtually no capital at all means almost no money at all. In Chinese, we call this Ji Hu. Uh, and then Barry Gordy founded Motown Records. Have you heard of this? Uh, uh, it, this was founded in Detroit, Detelu, uh, it, It's very important and famous for promoting African-American music in the 50s and 60s. Uh, and Barry Gordy started this company using borrowed money. This is very common. Uh, you ask people to give you money, and if your company makes money, you pay them back with interest. Here the word interest means li xi, interest. Uh, when you use interest to mean money added to a repayment, it is a non-count noun. Dang li xi de shi interest ge zi bu ke shu. So that's the first point, capital. The next point, interest ability and practical experience. 
um, above list. This is one way to say uh, the list that we just talked about. The above list, the above passage, the above group. We will. I'm not quite sure why this word is here. Really, we will really see. Very strange. A, a better word to put here is we will readily see. Which means we will quickly see, we will easily see. Uh, that they were all. Well seasoned veterans. A veteran originally means someone with experience. Uh, or someone with a lot of experience. And if there's no specific context, if the article does not tell you what kind of experience, then the word veteran usually means someone with war experience or with army experience. Uh, in Chinese, we call this roaming. But here it does give us a context. Veterans of their chosen fields of business. So when they later started their own company, they already had experience in that business. Finally, we have this word well seasoned. Season does not mean uh, the four seasons. Season here originally means spices. Uh, so if you season your food, that means you add seasoning. So if your food is well seasoned, that means that you have added different flavors and it tastes like a complete dish. As a metaphor, be yu, well seasoned means that someone has a lot of experience, has been through many different kinds of situations. So again, this is an example of bad writing because all veterans are well seasoned by definition. Uh, and then it explains this idea. When it says that they're all well seasoned veterans, it means that before they started their own companies, they had already learned many valuable lessons from the school of hard knocks. This is interesting. The idea here is that um, you get knocked about. And from that process, you learn things. So the school of hard knocks basically means the school of life. Uh, like Taylor Swift once said, um, I didn't get to go to college. My college was the school of life. So the school of hard knocks just means learning from hard experience. Uh, so this is what it says, right? A long, difficult period of experience. Period means uh, a, a certain time, uh, amount of time. Trial and error. If you don't know, this process means uh, trial just means to try, to try something. And if you get it wrong, that is an error. If you get it wrong, then you go back and try something else. And if you still get it wrong, you go back and try something else and you keep repeating until you get it right. That's what trial and error means. And practical application, the word practical comes from the word practice. Uh, you know this word as practice makes perfect. Right, Lianxi. But really what practice means is to do something. You're not just reading about it. You're not just listening to me talk about it. You actually go do it. So practice can also be translated as 时间. Uh, okay, Bill Gates, 
full time tinkering with computers to tinker with something or to fool around with something to mess around with something means uh, you're not quite sure what you want to do. You're kind of like figuring out uh, this thing. Uh, in Chinese, I guess we can translate this as chu wan. It's like to tinkering with computers, chu wan dianao, but not in the sense of playing video games. Or I guess uh, to tinker with music, you can say chu wan yin ri. Um, Liu Chud had many years of practical experience working for other record companies before he founded Chen Li, established, founded, started. Imperial Records, Di Wang Changpian Gong Zi. This is also another important record label uh, in the United States um, history of music. Barry Gordy had gone through bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is to have no money, po chan. The verb is to go bankrupt, xuan bu po chan. Did you know that in the United States, in order to go bankrupt, you have to spend money to hire a lawyer? So in the United States, it is possible for you to be too poor to go bankrupt. Uh, in under US, oh, I don't have to talk about US law, but like there are two different ways of bankruptcy. It's not important. There's personal bankruptcy and then there's a business bankruptcy. And of course, business bankruptcy is much more complicated. Um, so he had already gone bankrupt before he started his own record company, uh, Motown Records, which we saw in the last paragraph. So he had some hard experience. And then it says, if you look at other examples, we can see all around us in daily life. Uh, interest, aptitude, aptitude here means uh, how good are you at something? And experience are almost always the deciding factors. Deciding factors. These elements will decide whether you succeed or fail. If OK, so this is another one of those false if sentences. It starts with if, but it's not actually saying if it's saying this is true. One factor is even more important, and that factor is elbow grease. Uh, Thomas Edison said this is not true. Thomas Edison did not say this. Thomas Edison said 2% inspiration and 98% perspiration. So inspiration, you all know, right? Lingan. You think of something. It's a great idea. Perspiration means to sweat. Liu Han, Han Shui, to sweat. So the idea, of course, is that having a great idea is not the most important thing. You have to work hard to develop that idea. Right, hard work is more important than brilliant ideas. Um, notice this. Who worked 75 hours each week? Not Bill Gates, Bill Gates and his assistants. So even though this essay is focused on successful individual people, this sentence reminds us that it takes more than a single person. It takes a group of people to work together. It takes a group of people working together in order to be successful. By the way, 75 hours each week. If they work every day, that's a bit more than 10 hours every day. 
if they work only from Monday to Friday, that's 15 hours a day. And then one final note, so one last thing. To take inventory or to take an inventory of something. Uh, another way to say this is to take stock of something. Originally, this means you go into the warehouse or you go into the back of the store and you count how many things you have left that you have not yet sold. Um, but here it means to have to look clearly at yourself, to think clearly about your situation. Here, uh, take inventory of our motives. So to look and think clearly about why we want to start a business. Uh, so inventory just means kutsun. The same thing for stock. When if you say take stock, that word stock also just means uh, kutsun. Our overall motives. Overall means general. Uh, Dongji motives for starting our own business. Why do we want to do this? If our principal reason. So you guys know this word principal as me, uh, meaning the head of a school, like a high school. But the word principal actually means the most important. Uh, it's an adjective, so the most important. So a principal reason is the main reason, the most important reason. So how did that get turned into the head of a school? Because the principal of a school is the most important person in the school. It also means that this person is responsible for the school. They are the person in charge of the school. Uh, if in the future you uh, go to work and you work with some people on a project, the project leader can also be called the principal, the most important person of the project. Uh, so if your main reason is a desire for wealth and prestige because you want money and fame, prestige means to have a good name, your uh, And it also comes from French, so notice how I pronounce the word prestige. Not prestige, it's prestige. Farajuema. Uh, other French words like this include genre, labia, not genre, genre. Uh, and another word is azure, weilande, not azure, azure. Anybody studying French? No? Okay. So if you start a business because you want money and fame, your efforts, nuli, will be doomed to failure. Uh, so the word doom means the same thing as destiny or fate, except doom is always bad. It is always a bad outcome. So like doom to failure in Chinese is 注定失败. An interest in the work simply means you are interested in the work. Uh, and see improvement simply means to improve. Will carry us through, which means it will help us to succeed. Uh, you you don't. It, this is an idiom. You don't even have to add the second half of this. If you simply see it will carry us through or it will see us through, that means it will help us succeed. But in this case, the author did add the second half of this sentence. What will it carry us through? By the way, this is why if you play video games and you have a, a, 
a teammate who is really good and helps you, we say that he carries you. This is where that comes from. Uh, so what would these carry us through? The long hours. Long hours of hard work and sacrifice. She said. Necessary to build a successful business. OK, do you have questions about this one? OK, so let's see. I think we've talked about. OK, this one crucial just means critical, which means important. It comes from the word crux. Which means shizi. So it, it's referring to the center part of that X. It is the most important part. Crucial. Uh, you guys read Harry Potter, right? In book six, there's a horcrux, fooling tea or something. What was it called? Anyway, the English word is a horcrux. Uh, it comes from the same root. Yeah, OK, so. Uh, this is kind of boring. Let's stop here uh, and I'll give you some extra time to move to the other classroom.